up against Scott Whipple. Ball controlled by Whipple and Ledger, and Ledger will have the first possession of the basketball game. Campbell into the corner it goes. Fletcher back to Campbell. He's swinging it around with McNair. Now in the corner again it goes to Mc to uh, excuse me to Fletcher. Ledger content right now to swing the ball around, trying to get some offense. Long jump shot in and out, tipped around and controlled by Dakota Kilgore, but it will be on the line and it'll be Fitch basketball. Yeah, and Ledger's gonna see a lot of zone tonight. One, two, two by Fitch. Very important for the Colonels to find an outside shooter, take advantage of that zone. Ledger looking to press, broken easily. Volkerts drives to the basket. Strong layup is good. Eddie Volkerts gets the first points of the basketball game, and Ledger looking to come run the other way with Campbell. On cue, Volkerts to the cup. Swinging around now, it's McNair in the corner, it goes. Fletcher inside, Kilgore, nice spin move, no good over the top, goes Whipple strong for the rebound. His shot's no good. Another rebound and put back is good by Fletcher. Five men on the boards for the Colonels, Casey. Ledger presses, we got a quick steal, Fletcher, and a basket. Fletcher with back-to-back -back points, puts the Colonels on top. Nice job that time getting the ball over half court are the Falcons driving to the basket. Pass goes to Volkerts, he is double teamed. Ball on the floor, McNair comes up with it. Colonel's looking to run. McNair drives to the basket, left handed flip shot is good over Volkerts and a quick six point run by the Ledger Colonels. Yeah, Coach Cornish has gotta be happy with the defensive effort thus far. And a bad pass by Justice Farris that time. And we are seeing the young guards right now of the Falcons really struggling with the pressure from Ledger. And there's Coach Dave Cornish looking dapper, I might add. He's I was, got the sports doctor beat tonight. Uh, he looks good out there. He looks good, does Coach Cornish. McNair inside, goes to Whipple. He loses the ball out of bounds, but it will be off of Cooper, and it will stay Ledger basketball. So Greg Cooper is the last one to have touched it, and McNair will inbound for Ledger. Up top to Whipple, and Ledger will reset. Whipple drives, tries to get it to Kilgore, but too strong, ill-advised pass that time from Whipple. A little heavy traffic down low that time by the Falcons defense. Whipple nowhere really to go with that ball. Threw it out of bounds. Cooper, nice pass to Volkerts, and Volkerts is gonna head strong to the basket. Volkerts flies to the basket. Well, he took off from just inside the three-point line. His pure athletic ability make him dangerous from anywhere on the court. He's not afraid to take it to the cup. Strong move from Eddie Volkerts. He's got all four of Fitch's points. Ledger with the basketball. McNair, over it goes. And driving to the basket, goes Fletcher inside. Nice look to Whipple. He can't make the shot. I think he was bothered by Volkerts, and he'll get a foul. That'll be the first foul of the game, Scott Whipple on a little ticky-tack on Eddie Volkerts. Yeah, a little frustration there by Whipple. He missed the layup, he kind of reached in. It's almost an automatic for a foul being called. Yeah, I don't like the inbounds pass that Led that Fitch has been doing. They've been getting their guards trapped right away. They right. really got to get the ball out of that position. Although, that time, yeah. Benson tried to dribble through it. He loses the ball to Fletcher. Fletcher, a little pull up from the foul line is good. Nice job that time by Fletcher. And that's what that Ledger press tries to do. They try to bait you into the sidelines and then trap you right there. Very aggressive. Again, it goes to Benson, over to Cooper. Now they get it in the hands of Volkerts. Volkerts is the toughest one to trap, but picking of the pocket is McNair. McNair and Volkerts go to the basket. McNair and Volkerts with an athletic block. That's gonna get the crowd excited. Do it all, Eddie Volkerts. McNair wants the ball back. He wasn't, he's not used to someone going up like that. Fletcher, jump shot, no good. Rebound on the floor. Knocked out of bounds by Kilgore, and it will be Falcons basketball. Yeah, Ledger hustling, Fitch blocking shots. The place is alive, Casey O'Neill. Well, there's no doubt who the, the man in the gym is tonight. The man is Eddie Volkins. On the floor, loose again, and we're going to have a foul, a reach-in foul. They're going to get Whipple with his second, and I think... Scott Whipple is going to have to go to the bench for Ledger here with two early fouls. But still, I do not like what Fitch is doing here with their uh, response to pressure. Now they're dribbling the ball into the trap, Casey. Inside goes Volkerts, and oh! He was going to throw it down over McNair, but McNair got in the way and instead very athletically lays it in. Eddie Volkerts is doing it all so far. 
Whipple stays in the game, although there's a replacement at the bench. Fletcher drives, pulls up, and he's going to be fouled by Benson. Six apiece so far for Fletcher and Volker. It's the leading scorers in the game for both teams. Yeah. Fletcher showing you that rise up jump shot that he has. It's one of the purest looking jump shots in the ECC. Very well school skilled and tooled player on the offensive end. Fletcher, the junior guard, will go to the line to shoot two. Chance to try to extend the Colonel lead. He makes the first one. We saw some really bad foul shooting in the Whaler-Lancer uh, game early in the year. That was a very, very smooth foul shot that time by Fletcher. Yeah, and hence the term foul shot instead of free throw. That's right. <laughs> Anthony Vitorito into the ball game, replacing Whipple, the first substitution of the ball game. Second one is deftly put in by Fletcher. Nice touch. Yeah, Vitorito, a bit of a rim protector for the, uh, for the Colonels out there. Breaking the presser, ruling, loses the ball. Ruling tries to fight for it back, and it's going to be Ledger basketball. Right now, the Falcons are just not doing a good job with this Ledger pressure. Right, and the Ledger pressure is, is meant to create havoc. It's meant to create easy scoring opportunities, and the ball hits the floor, all the players are on it. Five early turnovers already for Fitch. Campbell and McNair swinging it around back and forth to Fletcher now. Inside to try to get it inside to Kilgore. It's tipped, it's loose on the floor, and out with it comes Farris. Over, he gets it to Volkerts. Quickly double teamed, swings it around. Long jump shot for Benson for three, no good. Volkerts comes up with it. In the corner it goes, three pointer, no good. Benson comes down with it, he tries to get it up, no good, and Fletcher comes out with it for Ledger. Ledger pushing, Fletcher on Volkerts. Volkerts does a nice job not giving up position. Rebound by Ruling, up ahead it goes to Benson. Now Benson's gonna go one on one with Vitorito, and they're gonna get a block on Anthony Vitorito on a hard drive by Jalen Benson. That was a good call there. Anthony Vitorito leads the team in charges this year. That was a good call. He was just a, a half a step late getting to the spot. Anthony Vitorito, tough kid, and like I said, a rim protector for the Colonels. I got to tell you, I love the fact that you know who leads the Ledger team in charges and taking charges this year. That's a good stat by the sports doctor as Jalen Benson goes to the line to shoot two for the Falcons. Doing a homework here, Case. Nothing but net on the first one from Benson. And we're going to get another substitution into the ball game. Greg Cooper will come out of the game, and Paul Pansiera will come into the game for the Falcons. First point scored by Fitch by other than Eddie Volkers. That would be a point by one of the Cruisers then. Yes. Benson will have John one Gafferty. more. <laughs> and let's never, again, never forget the Beaver Brown band. Benson with the second of two. A little push set shot is no good. Fight for the rebound, loose on the floor. Rolling, rolling on the line, and official Rich Radachoni says, Fitch basketball. Eduardo Gonzalez, we mentioned we thought he was going to be in the starting lineup. He comes into the ball game for his first action, and he replaces Jalen Benson. Ruling will inbound for the Falcons, and up top it goes to Volkerts. Volkerts over to Gonzalez. Gonzalez three-pointer is short. Strong rebound by Pansiera. Put back by Ruling, ball tip. Volkerts fakes a three, throws up another three, no good. High in the air, Volkerts somehow comes down with his own rebound, another three, and it's good! Eddie! Oh my! Three offensive rebounds that time for the Falcons, Casey. Uh, led to that bucket by Eddie, relentless on the offensive end. Inside, Kilgore back on top. It goes to Fletcher. Long three is good. Stephen Fletcher with a very pure jump shot. Rising up and sticking it from behind the arc. Farris breaks pressure, throws up a little runner. No good, and we're going to get an offensive foul. Who took the charge? Anthony Vitorito. There's my man, Anthony Vitorito underneath, taking a charge, doing work. And you like the way Stephen Fletcher steps up on one end and answers the you know, a big three by Eddie Volker. Stephen Fletcher, 11 points in the early going for the foul. Uh, Colonels. Would we call Anthony Vitorito a lunchbox player? Is that uh, he, he is? certainly Lunch is. Lunch pail guy. Trevor Hutchins into the ball game, replacing Kilgore for Ledger. Campbell with the basketball now. Ledger with a three-point lead. Swinging it around. Into the ball game also is Isaiah Knox for the Falcons. Inside Vitorito. Misses the bunny, gets his own rebound, and puts it back up and in. Yeah, nice slip to the bucket originally by Vitorito. He missed the chippy, but followed his own shot and got two. 
Volker it's by himself. Ledger looking to trap. They do. Gonzalez gets it to Knox. Knox. And finally it gets back to Volkerts. And he's going to look to reset with a strong pressure from Isaiah Campbell up top. Volkerts drives right, swings it in the corner to Gonzalez. Back on top to Ruling. Long three by Gonzalez is good. Eduardo Gonzalez with a three. Gonzalez had a little bit of room that time to make that shot. Ball pressure not there. That trip down for the Colonels. We saw him in the JV game getting a little bit of run as well. So Eduardo Gonzalez doing double duty tonight. McNair swings it over to Campbell. Vitorito down in the corner it goes. Fletcher trapped and they swing it back out. Ledger will reset. Campbell drives to the basket. Long three by McNair. No good. Volkerts tries to come down with it over Vitorito. Check that over Hutchins. And it was last tipped by Volkert, so it will be Ledger basketball. Yeah, the long arms of sophomore Trevor Hutchins have been an added bonus for Coach Dave Cornish this year. Gives them some extra size. He's the biggest guy on the floor right now, even bigger than Volkerts at 6'3. Fletcher pulls up for three. Oh, Stephen Fletcher can shoot the basketball. He is silky smooth on that rise up jump shot. And here he is on a steal, Casey. Behind the back, he's going in. Spins, no good. Volkert's got a piece of it. Turnaround is no good. I think he got fouled on the floor. And finally, Fitch comes out of it. Pansiera doing yeoman's work underneath. Gonzalez pulls up for three. No good long. Out of it comes Campbell. And we're going to have a loose ball foul on the floor. It's going to be against Pansiera. And with 51 seconds remaining in the first period, a very fast pace right now, yeah. but a slowly increasing ledger lead. It's now four with the basketball. Fletcher with 13 of their 17. And with 40 seconds remaining, a break that time for Ledger. It was tipped out of bounds by Knox, and Ledger will retain possession. McNair to inbound to Fletcher. Back inside to McNair at the foul line. Drives, left-handed runner. No good. Volkerts comes out of it. He's going to push. Volkerts going one-on-one -on -one with Fletcher. Drive to the basket. He's fouled. And Coach Cornish says that was on the floor. And he's going to have agreement from official Radicioni. He says it was on the floor. Eddie Volkerts just has that offensive mindset. Whenever he catches the ball, he's in attack mode at all times. He's a handful out there, Case. Knox with the basketball for the Falcons. Volkerts being guarded by McNair. And we're going to get a little hand check foul on McNair on Volkerts. That's another one of those little ticky tackers. And it should be noted that legend coach Dave Cornish, the jacket is off. With 26 seconds remaining in the first period, the jacket is off. Volkerts inbounds to Knox. Fletcher up on him. Knox is going to control the basketball. Fitch probably content to take the last shot, gets the ball into Volkert's hand, guarded by McNair, down towards 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Gets a pick from Pansiera, long three from Volkert's, no good. Knox with a rebound, pump fakes, too strong, and a rebound by Hutchins. Out of it comes Vitorito. He throws up a last second shot at the buzzer, and it was blocked by Volkert's. And that'll be the end of the first period. Your score at the end of one. The Ledger Colonel 17, the Fitch Falcons 13. You're watching Game Day on the Day.com. Chevrolets do cost less at MJ Sullivan's. 2016 Chevrolet Malibu Limited LT for only $157 a month or drive for only $6,207. You heard me right. Drive it for only $6,207. Your Chevrolet leader for over 30 years. MJ Sullivan, Chevrolet Cadillac Buick. Welcome back to Fitch High School. We're about to start the second quarter. Coach Dave Cornish has his Ledger Colonels out to a four-point lead. 
Keith, what did you see in that first period? Well, I'm pretty sure what Dave Cornish is talking to his troops about right now is Ledger just got to do a better job on the glass. There were a couple of different trips, two and three second chance opportunities for the Falcons led the bucket. So we talked about that in the opening of the game. Ledger's a little undersized. He just secure the rebound, Casey, before they get out on the break. Yeah, I mean, I think the story of this game is pretty easy. How big are Eddie Volkert's shoulders and how much can he carry? <laughs> He is playing defense, he is bringing the ball up, he is the only scoring option really thus far, despite Gonzalez's three-pointer. How much can Eddie Volkert accomplish on his own? Who will step up for Fitch? And can Ledger simply wear them down? Benson with the basketball, back into the ball game. He spins, heads to the basket, and he was stripped by Hughley Sebastian. Now coming out of the break, out of the first quarter there, Coach Dave Cornish put Isaiah uh, McNair, on, I'm, I'm sorry, Isaiah Campbell on Eddie Volkwitz to switch things up a little bit. Give him a little different look as far as man-to-man -man defensive pressure goes. In the corner, McNair up on top, Campbell. Ledger will reset. Vitorito inside, he tries to swing it. Tipped around, Hutchins gets it back out. Campbell will reset in the corner. It goes and a little steps that time by Hewley Sebastian. Makai Sebastian caught in no man's land. Didn't know if he would shoot it or take it to the hole. And It'll be Fitch ball. Cooper inbounds to Ruling. Ruling pressured. And it's stolen nicely by Campbell. He just was right there. Farris got the ball, turned around, walked right into him. Yeah, a traveling call there, and that's a big thing that Ledger does with their defensive press, their full court press. They call it center field. Always have a guy in center field looking for the ball. Fletcher back into the basketball game. He has it in the corner, swings it up top to Campbell. Pace slowing down a little bit here. Campbell tries to drive to the basket, kicks it to McNair. Now McNair drives, left-handed runner is no good. And the ball is loose on the floor, and we're going to have an over-the-back foul on Trevor Hutchins. A little too aggressive under the basket. Yeah, a little 1-2-2 two, two zone here in a half-court set for Fitch has given Ledger some trouble. Uh, trouble getting the ball into the entry in the big man, and trouble getting a clean look from the perimeter. Benson has it stolen again. This time McNair comes out of it. Fitch really struggling with the pressure of Ledger. Pull up, and sweet, sweet net. Steven Fletcher is a heck of a shooter. Money on fire, 15 points in the early going for Steven Fletcher. Volkerts fakes the three, drives to the basket. Reverse layup is good. Silky smooth on both sides, Eddie Volkerts. 11 points for Volkerts, unlimited offensive skill set. Wild shot by Campbell, Volkerts comes out of it. He's ahead of the pack, McNair racing to get the position. Volkerts drives, and two more for Eddie Volkerts. He is just clearly the best scorer on the floor. Well, there's not a secret to what he's going to do. He's going to take it to the rim there. Ledger's going to have to have one of their guards step in and try and take a charge. All due respect to Steven Fletcher, who might be the best shooter I've seen this year. Eddie Volkert can score. Campbell drives baseline, goes up on Volkert. too strong. Volkert tips the rebound to himself, and out of the pack comes Eddie Volkert. Volkert gets a great pick from Cooper. Down low it goes, back to Cooper. And Fitch will control the ball. Farris with a long three. Good! Justice will be served. Three-pointer from Justin Farris. And here comes the supporting roll. Players knocking down shots for the Falcons. And somehow, the Falcons have a lead. A 7-0 run by the Fitch Falcons. In the corner, it goes to Fletcher. He spins on Cooper, goes baseline, drops it down. Nice left-handed spinning shot by Trevor Hutchins. Gives Ledger the lead again. And then a quick steal from Hutchins, but official says he was on the line. That's Brett Yeomans, the other official, along with Rich Radicioni. And Yeomans says that it will be Fitch basketball. Yeah, you see freshman Ken Turner coming into the lineup. And again, another one of those added bonuses, one of those young guns for the Colonels. Yeah, Ledger likes to run waves of players at you, and certainly Turner adds another big body, only a freshman. Volkerts. Driving to the basket is ruling, and we're going to have an offensive foul. And who took the charge? Anthony Vitorito uh, stepping in. Vitorito is Italian for takes charges. Uh, he's a tough kid. He works very hard, and he does whatever the coaches ask him to do, he does. 
Some when you need a rebound, you need to take a charge, you need to get, a, get some cheap buckets on the offensive end. Tough, tough kid on the high school level. 21-20 Ledger with the basketball. Five minutes remaining here in the first half. An up and down battle so far. Inside it goes to Vitorito. Little pull up 10 footer, no good. And Volkerts comes down with the rebound for Fitch. Volkerts being hounded by Campbell. Volkerts goes to the basket, loses the basketball. It's going to be out of bounds, but stay Fitch basketball. And Ledger assistant coach Troy McKelvin says, Official, sir, I respectfully disagree with that call. But as always, McKelvin calmly eloquent in his point making. <laughs> Not a lot of people know more about basketball than Troy McKelvin. He has done it all. High school, college career, now in a coaching level. Volkerts swings it around in the corner. It goes. Benson. Now Ruling. Ruling drives to the basket. Left-hander is good. Ryan Ruling with a nice offensive move that time. Gives the Falcons the lead again. That dribble penetration and right to the rim. Nobody to guard the rim that time for the Legend Colonels. Easy bucket for the Falcons. 22-21. Seems like we're settling into a little bit of lead change basketball right now. Campbell working. Jump shot from the lane. No good. But he's going to go to the line and shoot too. Campbell with a nice one-on-one -on -one move. Drew the foul from... Jalen Benson, but it was Justice Farris who was locked up with him, and Campbell just a little shake and bake. Yeah, Isaiah Campbell, we call him Ice. The team calls him Ice, and you'll hear about that at halftime, but he is one of those kids, Casey, that he is very athletic, can create his own shot, can take it to the rim. And this is his first year as role of point guard for the Colonels. Campbell misses the first one. Back into the game is Isaiah Knox for the Falcons. Benson out of the ball game with his second foul. Second foul shot is good for Isaiah Campbell. Very confident free throw shooting we see from Ledger. Knox will bring the ball up. Fletcher's guarding him. Into the corner goes Knox. He tried to wrap it around to Volkerts, and they're going to say he took the extra step before he made the pass. A ninth turnover for the Fitch Falcons in the first half. Long arms of Stephen Fletcher and moving his feet a little bit creating a, uh, a turnover opportunity. Yeah, I would be shocked if Fitch can keep the turnovers under 20 for the game. Uh, Ledger is just too Relentless. intense with the pressure. They are, and they can throw body after body at you. Doesn't mean that Fitch can't win the ball game, but uh, you can certainly see where this is going to be a turnover-ridden game for them. The question is, can Volkerts overcome the turnover? That's what Ledger likes to do to you, though. Turn the ball over and create. Fletcher swings it. Now Campbell in the corner. Back it goes, and... Ledger will reset with three and a half. One, two, two zone giving the Colonels a little bit of trouble here. Inside, nice look. Back out at top it goes, however, to Fletcher. Fletcher loses it, ruling on him. Fletcher comes out with it, looks the push, pulls up just inside the three-point line. Oh, in and out. Rebound loose on the floor. Turner comes up with it, and Ledger will have another crack at it. McNair drives to the basket on Volkerts and gets it to go. Isaiah McNair with a high floater over Volker. It's a little retribution for the block earlier. Isaiah McNair is a streaky player. Great look from Knox to Cooper. And just like that, Fitch breaks pressure. And if they break the Ledger pressure, they're going to get easy opportunities. Yeah, and Ledger plays man-to-man -man defense straight. You cannot lose your man in this system. Great look inside. McNair to Vitorito. When he can't finish, Cooper got a hand on it. And I think Vitorito is going to reach in. And it will be Fitch basketball. We're all deadlocked at 24. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. Casey O'Neill along with the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien, the junior voice of Game Day and the whole Game Day crew. Mike DeMauro, Peter Wappy, and the fabulous production crew. We got Tim, we got, we got Tim Cook over there. We got Carlos, Carlos is around. Shelly. Shelly's around, yeah. The gang's all here. The gang's all here. The Scooby, Scooby crew. Mystery machine in the parking lot. Yeah, we've seen a couple times now for Ledger. They've missed some chippies and some bunnies on the offensive end, and it led to frustration fouls that time by Vitorito. Uh, we saw one earlier by Scotty Whipple. Fitch is in the bonus, one and one. So Farris will be at the line. He'll shoot one and one. That's the seventh team foul on Ledger. If we, if we were the Scooby-Doo crew, who would, who would you be? Who would you be? Would you shaggy. No, nah, there's no way you're Shaggy. You're I know. too much too buttoned up to be Shaggy. Oh. You'd have to be Fred. Fred, okay. You'd have to be Fred. Too buttoned up. You're too buttoned up to be. Right. Yeah, you're Fred. Up tight? Yeah, a little bit. All right. A little bit. I could, <laughs> I could be Shaggy. As long as I'm not Velma. I want to be Velma. 
Basket is Someone's good by scoop. Farris. <laughs> Someone's got, I think the junior voice wants to be scooped. Right. Farris, the second is good. And the Falcons have themselves a two point lead. I've been called worse. <laughs> Night's not over. Fletcher and Campbell playing a little two man game. Now, a long three by McNair. No good. And Volker, it's great position. Quick outlet to Farris. Farris taking it to the basket on Campbell. Gets it to go. And one. Reach in on Isaiah Campbell. And Justice Farris will go to the line with a chance for a three. We're going to get a basket good. Foul on Campbell with a push. And at the line will go Justice Farris. They just called a technical foul on Ferris as well, I believe, for taunting. Mike DeMauro is in my ear telling me that. So we'll get the one free throw and then the two on the other side. You know, but leading to that point is a missed long three-point shot by Ledger. Ledger not getting back on D, creating a scoring opportunity for Fitch. That's one thing that Dave Corns and staff, they don't like to see that. All right, mark it down with 2.09 remaining. Fitch had a two-point, at a four-point lead. Got the three-point play plus the technical foul. So let's see what happens to the lead here. This is Fitch's biggest lead of the game with five, with 2.09 remaining. And now the technical goes the other. Oh, it's going to go the other way, though. That's, yes. Taunting foul. Taunting Ferris. foul. And Fletcher drills. I think Fletcher is probably a very good foul shooter. I think yeah, he I can absolutely shoot. You know, Ferris has eight points. He's playing that second role to Eddie Volkerstein very nicely. So Fitch with a chance to extend the lead. Now Ledger gets to cut back in it. So that three-point play by the Falcons sort of undermined a little bit by the technical shots by Fletcher. And now instead Ledger with the basketball. Yeah, and 17 points out of the Ledger's 26 for Stephen Fletcher. He's tearing his team in the first half tonight. 2.07 remaining here. 29-26 Fitch. Inside Fletcher at the foul line. Tries to spin. Nice job by the Falcons on the trap. Fletcher, three from the top, short. Another rebound for Volkert. That's his 47th rebound, it feels like, here in the first half. Ahead, he tried to get it to Cooper, and it will be double-tipped, and it's going to stay Fitch basketball. But Eddie Volkert has to have a double-double here at the half. He's doing it on both ends of the floor. He's playing very well in his own defense. He's protecting the rim extremely well for the Falcons. Cooper gets the ball for Fitch. Farris back to Knox. And Knox will set up the Falcons' offense with 136. Off a of screen comes Farris. Long three from the top. Just short. Cooper with the rebound. Back to Farris. Tries it again. Second time is a charm for Justice Farris. It's like that 15-foot putt you missed. And when you, take it, when you try it again, you always knock it yeah, off. Yeah, 11 points for Farris. He's playing a very good second fiddle tonight to Eddie Volkers. Six-point lead for the Falcons. Ledger facing a little adversity here. The Colonels who struggled to beat St. Bernard's the other night. Fletcher. Nice job by Farris. We're going to get a timeout by Coach Dave Cornish with a minute remaining. He wants to talk about this thing now. He's going to draw up a play. Uh, it's a good timeout, too, because you're looking at the Ledger offense. It's slowing down. It's stalling against that 1 2 2 zone. Ledger is ineffective as far as getting the ball and an entry pass to the big man either at the top of the key, Casey or down on the baseline. Ledger struggling right now with Fitch's zone D. 19 to seven run by the Falcons, have them up by six with just a minute to go here in the first half. Awesome, one of the great phenomenon of basketball and all sports. Hey look, I'm on camera. Right there, now what is this, what is this conversation? Right now it's like, so you think in the 1-3-1 we should be sending the ball down to the corner? No, 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 Talking no. Talking about I Xbox. Think, no, I think right now they're dissecting this zone. See, right now he's pointing, right now he's saying, right, see, these right here is where we need to go. Future Colonel basketball stars. I got Jordans, you got Reeboks. What's going on? That's what he's saying. <laughs> Kids will certainly have a good time. Good, nice crowd here today to pitch high school. One minute remaining here in the first half. We'll see how Ledger draws it up here to finish the half. Down six. Campbell. They got some of the originals in. Kilgore back in the game. He was calling for it down low. Campbell drives to the basket on Volkerts. No good. Strong rebound up and no good by Turner. Aggressiveness from the freshman. And We've seen three or four missed layups here. Uh, Casey by the Colonels. They need to cash in on those bunnies. Big foul shots here for Turner. He's got a 
knock these down after he missed the easy follow-up, like you said. Only a freshman, good size. First one is good from Kenny Turner. Good pedigree, and his dad was a playground legend in North Stonington. Is that is that such a thing? Uh, how do I answer that without <laughs> offending? Uh, how do I answer that without offending the five people from North Stonington who might be listening tonight? Uh, yes, he can be a legend if he wants to be a legend. A legend is, is is fine. Turner makes both. Now Volkerts comes out of it for the Falcons. Thirty seconds remaining. Volkerts has Campbell, who's done a nice job harassing him. Volkerts, comfortable with the right hand, swings it in the corner to Farris. Farris with a three from the corner, no good, but ruling. Comes back with a weak side rebound and gives it to Gonzalez. Gonzalez drives left to Cooper, back to Gonzalez, trying to get it to Volkerts. They do, it's under 10, and it's stolen by Fletcher. Fletcher comes out of it, stolen again by Volkerts. Five seconds, he's already made one half court shot this year. Volkerts pulls up from three at the buzzer, no good. And that is your halftime score. Fitch, 32. Ledger, 28. A surprising run by the Falcons. I thought Volkerts was going to knock it down. He's knocked everything else down tonight. And in a moment, we're going to have the sports doctor on the floor. He'll be talking to the leading coach right now, Fitch's Alec Furtick. Get a couple of thoughts about what's going on here in the first half. Sports doctor. Coach Furtick, even with the 10 turnovers you guys had in the first half, you seem to handle that pressure okay at times. Yeah, you know, we've been working on it for a couple days. I saw him against St. Bernard's. Saw some things that I thought St. Bernard's exploited. I feel we have more ball handlers than him, so I'm fairly confident that we'd be able to break it. Second and third shot opportunities on the offensive end seem to create extra possession, extra points. Yeah, yeah we, you know, we're not the best shooting team. We're kind of more of a volume shooting team, so we're trying just to crash the boards and then stop them, you know, same way from getting second shots. And Eddie's got a little help out there tonight. Yeah, guys, guys are ready to play. Guys know how much, you know, this is more than a game uh, for both schools. So, you know, they didn't, you know, they got a whole new crew. Our guys haven't accomplished anything. So we're both looking to make a name for ourselves. All right, good luck in the second half, coach. Listen, 10 turnovers by the Falcons in the first half, and they're still up by four points. Coach Furtick got to be very happy and very pleased with his effort of his team so far, Casey. Absolutely. Thank you, sports doctor. We have a lot left to cover here. You're at halftime at Fitch High School where the home Falcons hold a 32 to 28 lead over the Legend Colonels. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. My name is Deanna Shepard Smith. I have two kids at Nathan Hale Elementary School in New London. They come from out of town, so they get up really early, get the bus, they come to school. The way that they teach the students here, it's concentrated on how the child learns. So each child is treated individually on how they learn and how they excel. I would say absolutely hands down, do what you can to get in. Without a doubt, I can't even begin to express how big the impact is. Chevrolets do cost less at MJ Sullivan's. A 2016 Chevrolet Cruze Limited LS lease for $95 a month or drive for only $48.49. That's right, drive for only $4,849. Your Chevrolet leader for over 30 years. MJ Sullivan, Chevrolet Cadillac Buick. He was good. Welcome back to Fitch High School. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. Casey O'Neill along with the sports doctor Keith O'Brien where we are at halftime. 32 to 28, your score. Fitch on top of the visiting Colonels. A 1997 graduate of Fitch High School, boys basketball coach Alec Furtick came back to his alma mater with a plan. Beat New London, beat NFA, beat them all. But he learned quickly it wasn't so easy. Now in his third year, he's using his love of his school, his love of his city, and the passion he had as a player to guide him. I uh, attended Fitch High from 1993 to 97. Went to Mitchell College from there. I was actually going to transfer to Connecticut College and play for Glenn Miller. But during that summer, he ended up taking a job at Brown. Uh, so I followed his son, uh, Tony, to Salve Regina University, where I played from 99 until I graduated in 2001. I coached at Salve for a while, and I always just wanted to, to come back here. Everybody get on the baseline. Things are a little different now. Everyone's a little more friendly. Uh, but I still have a little early to mid-90s in me, and I just wanted to coach Fitch and beat New London and beat NFA and, you know, just be a grotten guy and, you know, and just beat everyone. <laughs> he doesn't really talk about it a lot. Like, I know because, like, the athletic director and stuff, I hear from them that he played here. He was pretty good. I heard during one of the alumni games, he 
put the most points up, like last year or two years ago. Do you see how much this this place means to him? Yeah, it does. Especially like when we're losing and stuff, or like something, like he gets in trouble or something. Like you can see in his face, his emotion, that like it really means a lot to him. You know, I'm still still learning. Uh, you know, I admit now, year three, I was a little little arrogant coming in. It's been a little while since I had been here, and I was thinking, you know, Fitch High School. You know, we're going to pound everyone, battle, maybe split with New London, split with NFA, beat everyone else, and then maybe my third or fourth game, we play Bacon Academy, and then the game's over and I lose by 30 points. With me being away for about 10 years, I kind of, everything was just, you know, totally, totally different. You know, so I had to slowly adjust uh, my mindset uh, and that these kids, you know, it's not what I know, it's what, what they know, and that was kind of hard for me. I constantly uh, have to check myself and, you know, tell myself it's 2015, not, you know, 1995. Like, we're not getting ready to, you know, guard Tyson Wheeler and we're obsessed about it for two weeks. Uh, you know, these guys are a little nicer than, than we were. I think we're going to like talking to Alec Furtick because he is just honest and uh, pretty insightful about his, his limitations and his skill sets. Right, Sports Doctor? Yeah, and he certainly brings a, a winning reputation into this program as far as you know, playing ball here, going on to Salva Regina. He's the all-time field goal percentage leader at Salva Regina, so he brings a, a level of credibility into the Fitch program. Yeah, I really enjoyed his uh, sort of honesty about the fact that they're not a good shooting team right now. Right. You know, we call you the Sports Doctor. You know, that's, 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 a, that's a solid nickname. How about things like Pistol Pete, Earl the Pearl, The Dream, Larry Legend, Dr. J, King James, Air Jordan, or Magic? You know, nicknames are as much a part of the history of basketball as jump shots and championships. For Ledger guards Isaiah McNair and Isaiah Campbell, their nicknames are very personal and very different. I was two years old, and I always used to just run around the house with snot in my nose, just running around, and my mom always used to just chase me with a napkin trying to get the snot out, but I wasn't having it, so she just kept chasing me and chasing me. So she, she just came up with Booger. I just, ever since then, everybody calls me Booger or Boog. So I'm not used to Isaiah, everybody just called me Booger. Got it from my JV coach, Coach Troy, because I played the youth football with him in London, and um, I was a wide receiver, so I was like Jerry Rice, but my name started with an I, so we just took it, took it out and called me Ice. Booger, no, I wouldn't want that, because no, cause it just looks like you pick your boogers all the time. I don't want that. I'm okay with it. Everybody calls me it, so I'm, I'm fine with it. Some people call them boogers, so it's even funnier. My coaches, they, they say it with an E-R, so that's when everybody started laughing and all that. But it's really with an A, booger, not booger. Well, some teachers, they, they call me booger, but some teachers, when students call me it, they be like, don't call him that, call him by his real name. Most of them call me Ice, and only like one or two call me Isaiah. My old math teacher, Miss Flax, is calls me Booger all the time. One of my favorite teachers, she calls me it. Some other teachers be like, don't call him that. How about your mom when you're in trouble? Isaiah. When I'm not in trouble, Booger. But when I'm in trouble, Isaiah. And what is that young nickname gonna be? Is it gonna be Flash, is it going to be the man, or is he going to end up walking around with snots on his nose, too? <laughs> you know, the beautiful thing, too, about high school basketball is it's supposed to be fun. And when you look at the Ledger kids, Isaiah and Isaiah, Booger and Ice, it's Booger, not Booger. They're having fun with it, Casey, and you like to see that. It keeps the mood loose, and their team leaders as well. I mean, I guess it could have been a lot worse, right? It could have, it could have been Snots McNair. You ever had a nickname? I have. We'll talk about that when we come back. You're watching Game Day. Live on theday.com. Chevrolets do cost less at MJ Sullivan's. 2016 Chevrolet Malibu Limited LT for only $157 a month or drive for only $6207. You heard me right. Drive it for only $6,207. Your Chevrolet leader for over 30 years. MJ Sullivan, Chevrolet Cadillac Buick.
Welcome back. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. And I love the nicknames. Yes, when I was in, uh, when I was in high school, my, uh, the great baseball coach at New London High School, Gil Vargas, called me a fire plug. He said, you're short, you're squat, you're a fire plug. So, of course, my <laughs> nickname became Plug. Uh, well, plug go. was my nickname in high there school. You go. Plug it up the middle on, on a double play or what? I, I wish it was that good. But the, my, my baseball players called me 3-7. I was named after the great Casey Stengel, wore 37 my whole life. It's not as cool as the sports doctor. No, that's a, it's a listen, making a house call too. Casey, first half of this game so far, you know, saw you know, a game of runs a little bit. Stephen Fletcher, 17 points for the Colonels leading the way. Uh, Booger McNair has four. No other player is more than that for, for, for Ledger right now. And Eddie Volkerts with 13 and Ferris chipping in for 11. So a balanced attack thus far for the Falcons. Yeah, I mean, this is really uh, an interesting second half that we're going to have coming up because we asked in the, in the first half, who's going to take some of the pressure off of Eddie Volkerts? And it was Justice Farris. Uh, he really stepped up not only with points, but kind of brought a little rhythm to the offense. And it looks like Fitch has started to at least figure out how to get points when they do break the ledger pressure. Right. Ten turnovers, but it didn't stop them from just keep pushing, pushing, and being aggressive. And it's a great point there. You know, usually ten turnovers, and you're down at halftime. They're up four right now. And it's got to concern uh, the, the ledger coaching staff right now. They want to instill their style of basketball, create a little havoc for the Falcons. And Fitch is and times handled it, and other times didn't, but right now they're up by four. I think having Whipple back in the ball game in the second half will help the energy level of Fitch, maybe uh, me of Ledger, maybe help with the rebounding. There's way too many second chance points for the Falcons in that half. But I think more than anything else, you got to find a second scorer after Stephen Fletcher. You're right. And the other thing, too, Casey, you make a great point is, you know what, make your layups. You know, they missed three or four chippies in the first half. That's an easy buckets in, you know, in a game where it's four points, it's a big swing. You know, Ledger, a lot of bodies rolling at you, but I was impressed with Alec Furtick's ability to put some extra bodies on the floor as well. We saw Isaiah Knox. We saw Ryan Ruling. We saw Paul Pansiera. So a lot of guys on both sides of the ball. Two teams not afraid to go to their benches. Right, and I think you kind of have to when you're playing against a team like Ledger that is, you know, 2-2-1 two, two, full court press nonstop the entire game. You know, they play an aggressive style of defense. Like you said, they're rotating players in so keep their legs fresh, and it should be an interesting chess match here in the second half. It's a good ball game here. Kind of expected this. Original starting five out there for the Falcons. Volkerts, Ruling, Benson, Farris, and Cooper. We'll see who comes onto the floor for the Colonels. There's Fletcher, McNair, Campbell, Whipple, and Kilgore. So the original starting five for both teams in here to start the second half. And the Falcons will have the basketball. Yeah, Scotty Whipple's going to have to step up here in the second half, keep himself out of foul trouble, give the Colonels a little something. Ledger pressuring. Farris comes, drives straight to the basket. Wild runner, no good, but they're going to get a foul on Fletcher. Stephen Fletcher is going to pick up a foul, and that is not the way they want to start the second half with Farris going to the line to shoot two. Yeah, and again, Stephen Fletcher was beat off the dribble. Late weak side help by Dakota Kilgore. And, yeah, the foul was on Kilgore. And it's, uh, it's a two-shot opportunity here for the uh, Falcons. And it was on, and Jalen Benson is going to the line, so we had it all wrong. Benson makes the first. So Benson drives to the basket, fouled by Kilgore, not by Fletcher. And I think that's probably, if they had to make a choice, Ledger would prefer the foul on Kilgore anyway. they got to have that weak side pressure get into the rim before the play with the ball does. Second one up and good by Benson and a six-point lead again for the Falcons. They have gotten it to six. They have not been able to extend it past that. Campbell, McNair, and Fletcher all on the perimeter, swinging it around for the Colonels. Whipple flashes. Campbell gets it to Whipple at the foul line. Pressure. Fletcher comes out with it, fakes a three. Ruling right up on him, forces him to swing it back outside. Coach McKelvin yelling, move the ball for the Colonels. Inside, there's Whipple. There's that athleticism we talked about, an extra scoring dimension, Scott Whipple. A little spring in his step by Scotty Whipple. His first bucket of the ball game. Soft pressure that time from Ledger. Fitch breaks it pretty easily. Ruling now to Benson. Benson with a long three, short. Cooper saves it to Volkerts. Volkerts swings it back to Benson. Benson drives to Farris in the corner for three. Oh, how did that not go down? Cooper, though, with a weak side rebound, and Fitch will reset. In and out for Farris. Ruling. Right hand drives, running wild, hook is good. Ryan ruling for two, and the biggest lead of the ball game 
for the Fitch Falcons. Another second chance opportunity bucket for Fitch. We saw many of those in the first half. They keep getting it to six. They can't get it higher. Inside again, Whipple. Nice look to Kilgore. Swings it back on top to Campbell. Campbell, 12-footer. In and out. Strong rebound from Volkerts. That was tough. That was a nice look that time from Ice Campbell, but he couldn't get it to go. It's cold as ice. Is ice. I like what you did there. Volkerts loses it out of control. Kilgore up the floor. Fletcher pushing it for Ledger. Pulls up just outside the foul line. Silky smooth. Don't get into shooting contest with Stephen Fletcher. Stephen Fletcher doing work out there. 19 points. Again, soft pressure this time from Ledger. Full court extended. They get it to Volkerts. Volkerts drives on Kilgore. He's triple teamed. Comes back out with it. Swings the ruling in the corner. Farris, long three again, in and out. Cooper with the rebound on the floor. It's loose. And Cooper's tied up, and it'll be a jump ball. The possession arrow will favor the Colonels. Right. The bottom line right now, too, is Ledger is getting out-hustled and out-scrapped for some of those rebound opportunities. Fitch is coming in with a head of steam, and they're just hitting the glass, and they're all hustling the Colonels right now. Those two three-pointers by Justice Farris were both in the cylinder and came out. Bad breaks, just like on the other side, Campbell. The rim's being a little, a little cruel here in the early going. Flash, Whipple, 12-footer, no good. Rebound loose on the floor. Out with it comes Fletcher. He gets it to go, and a foul. Stephen Fletcher says, you know, that Volkert's kid's not the only one that can score here tonight. I got you, coach, and one, says Stephen Fletcher. Taking matters into his own, own hands. Second chance points there for the Colonels, Case. Coach Cornish likes that one. Looking to cut this lead to one is Stephen Fletcher. Very like strong that. for a guard. Very strong, Casey. Yeah, he is. Only a junior. Looking forward to see what he brings to the table next year. An early player of the year candidate for next year in the ECC. Fitch loses it out of bounds, but will retain the basketball. Again, you talked about Fitch getting that lead up to six. Can't get over the hump. Legend makes a couple of plays. We're down a two-point game again. Benson gets a pick from Cooper. Now he's pushing. Tries to drive, and we're going to get a carry. Oh, wow. You don't often see a carrying violation these days, but a palming of the basketball. And it'll be another Fitch turnover. Campbell brings the ball up for Ledger, looking to tie the game or take the lead for the first time in what seems like quite a long time. Inside again, Whipple flashes. Pull up from 12 feet, no good. He's got to get that one to go. Cooper comes out with it for Fitch, and he's hounded, and he is going to travel, falling to the floor. And I don't think that... It pleases Coach Furtick. Yeah, and Ledger has come out here in the second half and making a commitment to getting the ball to about the foul line area, getting Whipple some space, and trying to knock down that 10 12 foot jump shot. They have to find a way to penetrate that zone. McNair to inbound. Fletcher flashes. Instead, it's up in the air, and it's intercepted by Farris. Ill-advised pass. Farris to Benson. Benson loses it. Tipped out of bounds. It'll stay Falcons basketball, but a little sloppy here in the early going of period number three. Well, I'll control, young man. Slow down. Set things up. If you got nothing, pull it out. Ruling to inbound. Tough, but he finally gets it to Volkerts. Volkerts being hounded by Campbell. Drives baseline. Little floater with the left hand. No good. Ruling comes down with it. Strong rebound. Up. No good. Cooper rebounds. Tries to throw it off a of Whipple, but Whipple catches it, and he's going to run the floor for Ledger. Nice job that time by Scotty Whipple holding on to the basketball. McNair inside to Whipple. Whipple drives, blocked by Volkerts, but they're going to call a foul on Eddie Volkerts, and he said, I had my hands up. What, I, what else can I do? Dave Cornish working the referees on the sideline. Kind of bought one there, big coach Dave Cornish. But again, it, exposing that 1-2-2 two, two zone you know, at the foul line, the foul line extended, exposing the middle is what Fitch, uh, Ledger is trying to do here in the second half. Yeah, they didn't have Whipple for much of the first half no. with two early fouls, and he's the guy that they really used to break it down by flashing just inside the foul line. He can turn, and he can either dish the ball off, or he can make those little 12-footers. He's got that athletic ability. He, he can jump through the gym. He's the guy that they need there. But they got to hit down your free throws, too. You mean the foul shots? <laughs> free throws. Well, if they were free, they'd go in. He gets second one to go. Scott Whipple cuts it to one. Ledger again with soft pressure. Cooper to Volkerts. Three-quarter pass, ill-advised. Eddie Volkerts can't make that pass. Intercepted by Campbell. He's coming the other way. McNair has it now. McNair. Fletcher. Ledger looking to take the lead. Fletcher fakes the three, and 
Took an extra step. We see that all the time. The pump fake, extra little, little stutter step, turnover, and Fitch basketball. Yeah, I was looking for Fletcher to spring one there. Pop one from behind the arc. If they're packing in the zone a little bit, maybe take that shot, loosen it up a little bit. Benson running the point. Gets it to Volkert. Volkert spins, tries to drive. Gets it to Farris. Back up top to Cooper. And Fitch will reset. They're really hounding Volkerts. This time it's Campbell. Long three from Benson is good. Jalen Benson for three. And just like that, the lead back up to four. Six points for Benson. Step it up. Not afraid to take big shots, Casey. Fitch packing it in. Whipple trying to get the ball. He does at the foul line. Spins nicely off of Volkerts. High shot. Now that is some ups right there because Scotty Whipple got that over the top of Eddie Volkerts. Great athleticism. Scotty Whipple factor that time. Coach Cornish, you are not allowed to steal the basketball from the Fitch Falcon player. And it will remain Falcon basketball. He wants to take it to the rim himself out there. Coach Cornish could play a little bit. He doesn't tell you that, but he could play a little. He wouldn't pass it. I can tell you that. He'd shoot it. He wouldn't pass it. He's a chucker. Chucker, chucker yes. Volkerts springs a long three. No good air ball for Eddie Volkerts. And it looks like he's pressing just a little bit right now. Yeah, and a nice job that time by Ice out there. Isaiah Campbell closing out space, not giving uh, Volkerts any kind of room to spring that three. Would you say that Ice was trying to cool Volkerts down? Like that? Whipple no good. Out of the pack comes Benson. Benson looking to run. Takes it to the hole on Fletcher. And a layup is good. Jalen Benson. The last five points for Fitch. Swinging it around are the Colonels. On the baseline, Vitorito, turnaround jumper, no good, rebound Volkerts. Nice turnaround that time good by look. Vitorito, just couldn't get it to go. Good luck that time. Ruling, drives to the basket, dumps it down to Cooper with nowhere to go, but off of a ledgered, uh, Fitch player rather, and it'll be ledgered basketball. We're gonna get a timeout on the floor here from Fitch. 41-37, uh, the Falcons, they have held on to this lead. Yeah, it's a pretty fast-paced third quarter, but not a lot of action going on. It just seems like, uh, you know, from turnovers to the missed shots, and it just seems like right now the game offensively is kind of stuck in the mud a little bit. You know, basketball games uh, are games of runs, you know, you can, and you can sense when one team is about to go on a run. Right now, Eddie Volkerts is in a lull. Right. He, he was high energy in the first half. He was scoring. He was rebounding. Ledger's done a very nice job. Right now, he's a little frustrated. He needs a basket here in this second half to sort of get him going again. And that's why what Benson and Farris have done is so important. Yeah, and on the flip side with the Colonels, you know, their signature is their press and their pressure. And so far, Casey, like you'd mentioned, in the second half, it's been a bit almost token pressure. They're not committing to the trap, and they create offense off their defense. Easy scoring opportunities is what Coach Dave Cornish wants to see. 2.30 here in the period number three. Falcons on top of the Colonels, 41-37. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. Casey O'Neill along with the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien. Game two of this season's slate of basketball games on Game Day. Got something a little different for you for our next game. We'll talk about that a little bit later as Ledger swings the basketball. Inside it goes to Whipple. Whipple puts it on the floor, throws a jumper up over Volkerts. Volkerts with a strong rebound. Whipple getting good looks, just couldn't get that one to go. Farris pushes the other way. Ruling, nice job. Ruling was going to take it to the basket. He saw Vitorito, the Italian charge man, and instead he gets a cheap one on Whipple, and that's going to be his third. Yeah, cheap is the terminology I would use on that. Whipple, that's 25 feet with the offensive player's back turned to the basket. Bad foul that time by Scotty Whipple. I think he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Fletcher does a nice job, but Benson gets the ball for the Falcons, and with two minutes remaining, the Falcons have a chance to extend what is currently a four-point lead. Benson calls off the play. Ruling comes off the screen. He gets it to Volkerts up top. Volkerts swings it back to Benson. Ledger ra ramping up the pressure a little bit. In the corner, it goes to Ruling. Ruling pounding the basketball, and up to the top, it goes to Benson. Campbell doing a great job. They're double-teaming Volkerts as soon as he gets the basketball. Ruling drives the basket, little floater, no good. Strong rebound by Whipple, and Ledger's going to try to push. Fletcher coming out with it. Fletcher on Ruling, swings it back to Campbell, over to Whipple. A little different offensive set this time for Ledger. Fletcher, the nice spin, but he loses it to Cooper, who gives it to Volkerts, and now 
out the other way comes Ledger, uh, comes Fitch. Trap is Volkerts ruling in the corner. It goes to Ferris. Long three, no good. Weak side rebound to McNair. Out of the pack comes McNair. He swings in the corner to Vitorito. He goes baseline on Cooper. Now on Volkerts and took a little bit too many steps that time. Bit of a hop step there, not a jump step. Knox back into the basketball game for Fitch and also Kenny Turner, the freshman who we saw have some good minutes in the first half back in the game for Ledger. Yeah, not a lot of offensive flow for the Colonels here in the third quarter. Neither team really offensively finding a rhythm here in period He's number three. Stuck. Ledger tunes up the pressure a little bit, but Volkerts has it. A huge pick by Knox on McNair. A three from the corner is good from Ferris, and what a swing of events that was. 14 points for Ferris for the Falcons. Justice tipping the scales for the Falcons. Vitorito goes strong, spins on Volkerts, no good. Ball loose and out with it comes Campbell. Booker McNair with a long three, no good. Gets his own rebound. Nice follow and athleticism from Campbell. Great play by McNair. Excuse me, McNair, Booker McNair. Six points for McNair. Follow your shot, son. Knox, Farris, long three, no good. Rebound comes down on the floor and out of bounds with 4.6 four seconds. It'll be Ledger's opportunity for one final shot. Scotty Whipple coming back into the game for offensive purposes. Really got a, I love what McNair did that time, following his own shot like that. Great job. McNair from half court. Has to get rid of it, throws it up, and no good. And that's the end of period number three. We've got ourselves a fourth quarter of exciting basketball, but Fitch has held on to their halftime lead, 44-39 over Ledger. Join us when we come back. You're watching Game Day on the day.com. Chevrolets do cost less at MJ Sullivan's. 2016 Chevrolet Malibu Limited LT for only $157 a month or drive for only $6207. You heard me right. Drive it for only $6,207. Your Chevrolet leader for over 30 years. MJ Sullivan, Chevrolet Cadillac Buick. Welcome back here to Fitch High School. We have eight minutes remaining here in a capacity crowd here, anticipating what should be a fun fourth quarter. The Falcons, the home Falcons, hold a five-point lead, 44-39. Coach Dave Cornish imploring his Colonels to tune up and turn up the offense. Yeah, just seven points in that third quarter for the Colonels. No easy bucket opportunities, a follow-up by Booger McNair. But that was about it. No real flow that time for the Colonels on offense. And in the third quarter saw Eddie Volkerts not score a point for the Falcons, and his team increased their lead. That's because Justice Ferris really stepped up, knocking down some threes, and we asked who would be the second fiddle to Volkerts. Well, Justice says he's no second fiddle. He's a primetime player, and he stepped up here. Eight minutes remaining, lots of questions to be answered. We're looking forward to an exciting fourth quarter. Fitch will have the basketball. Isaiah Knox, right in front of our booth, will inbound the ball for the Falcons. Ferris, the leading scorer with 14 now for the Falcons. Cooper gets the basketball. Turner on him, and Fitch swings it around, and will start Whipple on the Volkerts now. Volkerts drives baseline, and we're going to get a little bump. We'll see who they call that, and I think it's on Fletcher. That weak side defense for Ledger, you have to beat... Volkerts to the spot and take the charge. He is going to turn the corner. He's going to go to the rim. He got by ice, and he was going to the rim, and Stephen Fletcher's got to commit to that. Inbounds goes to Cooper, and we're going to get another cheap foul, this time on Turner. Back-to-back -back cheapies on the Colonels. Right, Dave Cornish on the sidelines encouraging the kids, no hands. Hands off the hips, hands off the bodies. Yeah, you make a really good point with beating the guy to the spot. It doesn't matter if they take the charge. They just need to get to the spot and, and prevent Volkerts right. from whoever. Steal by McNair, running the floor, and an easy two by McNair. That's exactly what Ledger needed. Speaking of beating to the spot, great center field play by Booger McNair. Knox tries to get it into Cooper, but it's a kick and it will remain Falcons ball. Eight points for Isaiah McNair, and he's a very, very streaky scorer. He can light it up in bunches. 
Colonel's looking for a little spark right now. Knox to Volkerts. He's at the top of the key. Eddie Volkerts launches a long three. Good! Fourth quarter for Fast Eddie with a quick three. Bombs away. Eddie Volkerts. First bucket, Casey, for Eddie Volkerts in just over 10 minutes. Well, he made it a three to get him a little extra. 47-41. Campbell with a runner. Ball tipped. Volkerts comes out of the pack. Puts it on the floor. Volkerts looking to push. Goes behind the back. Now with the right hand. Strong to the lane. Eddie Volkerts, little floater. Oh, in and out. Strong rebound by Turner. And Ledger will push. I thought Volkerts had another one. Comes down the court with a head of steam, doesn't he? He has got purpose. Campbell spins. Jump shot at the foul line, no good. Volkerts comes out with another rebound. Tough shot by Isaiah Campbell. Can't buy one on the offensive end. Benson will run the offense for the Falcons. Six-point lead and the basketball. Gets a screen. Benson pushes, drives, throws it up, and it's good! Jalen Benson with the right-handed flip shot is going to go to the line. And there's the biggest lead of the ball game for the Falcons at eight. Little double high screen that time for Jalen Benson. Turned the corner and took it to the cup on Scotty Whipple. More importantly, the foul on Whipple will send him to the bench with 6.35 remaining. Oh, no, he's going to stay on the floor, but he has to be careful of getting another foul. The and one is good by Jalen Benson. The sophomore guards, Benson and Farris, have really stepped up in this game. The biggest lead of the game is nine for either side. Right now, the Falcons have it. They both combined for 25 points in this game, Casey. That's the story of the game. These two sophomore guards stepping up and helping out their senior leader, Eddie Volkers. And Ledger now in a position and a bad turnover that time off the hands of Fletcher. The Falcons with 6-14 have a nine point lead and the ball and Ledger facing some adversity right now is gonna have to find a way to get some easy buckets. Yeah, the zone is really giving them problems on the offensive end right now. Coach Alec Furtick and his staff prepared very well for this game. Benson takes it into the corner. Farris comes off of a screen. Farris back up top to Benson. Fitch running a completely different offense than they ran earlier in the game. Benson doing a double high screen. Ledger, Fletcher steps up, now comes down to Volkerts. Volkerts at the top of the key, guarded by Fletcher. He'll Looking for that. a screen, gets a screen from Cooper. Cooper rolls to the basket, but instead they set it up top. Fletcher goes for the steal, just shy of it. Volkerts gets it, he's gonna push. Volkerts, left-handed floater, no good. Strong rebound by Whipple, and out of the pack come the Colonels. Whipple, looking to push. In the corner, Turner, up top it goes, Fletcher. Fletcher, three, got it! Steven Fletcher. Big time players making big time shots. Steven Fletcher, 24 points. Welcome to the ECC, son. Cuts it to six, 5.07 remaining. Benson, the Ledger fans trying to make some noise here. Benson to Knox in the corner, nothing there. Right now, time is on Fitch's side. Cooper gets a nice screen. Benson with some dribbling. Kicks it to Volkerts. Three, no good. Volkerts gets his own rebound. Goes strong, and he's fouled. And Eddie Volkerts will shoot two, following up his own missed shot. Smart, heady player. Long shots, long rebounds, Casey. Eddie Volkerts stepped in, grabbed the three-pointer. He's short-rimmed, and he's going to the line for two free throws. Right now, Volkerts with a chance to increase the Fitch lead, but six fouls on Ledger right now and only two for Fitch. Fouls have really hurt the Colonels here in the fourth period. Volkerts knocks the first one down, and Knox is going to come out of the game. We're going to see Ruling back into the game for the Falcons. 17 points for Volkerts as he looks to try to convert this free throw to put his team up by eight. No good, and a strong rebound by Whipple. What an athlete Scott Whipple is. McNair to Fletcher now. Ledger down seven. Fletcher drives to the basket. We're going to get an offensive foul. Push off with the left arm. And Stephen Fletcher does not understand. Says, why, why is that a foul? Stephen Fletcher looking to take matters into his own hands on the offensive end that time. 
taking it to the rim, a little frustrated after that offensive foul call. Seven point lead and the basketball. Fitch right now comfortable milking some clock here on this possession. Benson gets it, Volkerts stripped, Volkerts inbounds, he loses it, and Fletcher is going to draw a foul on Farris. Volkerts, in an attempt to avoid the backcourt violation, ends up turning it over. Yeah, and you can see that look in Stephen Fletcher's eye right now. He is in go mode on the offensive end. If Ledger is looking for somebody to carry the offensive load here down the stretch, it could be number one for the Colonels. Extended zone for the Falcons, Fletcher. Whipple at the high post, back to Fletcher, in the corner to McNair, three, is good. Great ball movement that time by the Colonels, the extra pass finds Booger McNair in the corner for the trifecta. Volkerts comes the other way for Fitch, pulls up, 17 footer, in and out, no good. Eddie Volkerts frustrated, he thought that one was pure. And here come the Colonels on the break, Case. Fletcher, Turner, long shot is no good. No offense here, but what's a freshman doing taking that shot? And now they Fitch. grow up quick, Casey. I'm sorry, they grow up quick in the league. Fitch with a four-point lead in the ball. And Benson's going to travel. He tried to get baseline, but he made that extra step. 14th turnover for the Falcons. And it looks like Ledger's defense is starting to create a little havoc on the Fitch uh, offense, Casey. Ledger looking to get the back into the game through their defense. I love Kenny Turner's confidence. I love, he wants to be a playground legend like his dad. But you know what? As a <laughs> freshman, I give him credit. That's a big shot for a freshman to take. Fletcher's got to take this shot for Legend. Inside it goes to Whipple. You know he likes it. Back out to Fletcher. Pump fake. Long three for Fletcher. No good. Strong rebound by Cooper. And we're under three minutes. Benson comes out with it for the Falcons. And surprisingly, Fitch has not tried to stall a little bit here. They have really run an aggressive offense. Looking for a high screen from Ruling. Instead swings it to, to Farris. Farris guarded by McNair. In the corner, ruling. Back up top, and now Fitch is comfortable taking a little bit of air out of the ball. Farris being guarded by McNair, gets a screen from Cooper. Swings it to Benson. Benson wanted the three, but he thought better of it. Instead, ruling 15-footer is good. Ryan ruling, the senior, knocks down a big shot to give a six-point lead for the Falcons. Six points for ruling off the bench, contributing very well for the Falcons. Whipple, 10-footer in the lane, no good. Strong rebound and follow by McNair. Athleticism personified. 13 for McNair. He starts to heat up here in the second half for the Colonels. Ledger pressing. Ruling gets it. Three-pointer from the corner. High rebound, no good on the floor. Who comes out with it but Fletcher looking to push in a four-point deficit. Fletcher, strong to the basket, loses it off his foot. Steven Fletcher with a turnover. And Coach Dave Cornish wants a timeout to talk things over. A tough break that time for the Colonels. Yeah, Fletcher was coming down with a head of steam, looking to take it to the cup. Dribbled the ball off his foot, could have cut it to a one possession game. But the Colonels right now down by four on the road. I got to admire the confidence that some of these kids out there, you got Kenny Turner, only a freshman, not afraid to take a big shot. Ryan ruling on the other side of things for Fitch, not afraid to take a big shot. Confident kids here doing their best with 140 remaining. Well, and they're gonna, you know, Fitch is gonna need those players. When, when Volkert slows down, it gets a lot of the defensive attention for the Colonels. You know, if Ledger is not firing on the offensive end, these coaches are finding out right now in league play, Casey, you know, what they have on the court and what their players are made out of. Some of the best athletes on the floor right there, the Fitch High School cheerleaders. I'd love to see the athletic and very acrobatic things that cheerleading competitions have to offer this year. I watch what those cheerleaders do, and I think how many different ways I'd hurt myself. Oh. You got a bad back. You better be careful. Yeah, bad everything. You still go to the chiropractor? I do go to the chiropractor. You're the, you're, the, you're the plug. Casey Chiropractic in Colchester, Connecticut. Thank you, Dr. Casey, for all you do to keep me upright. Sports doctor, make a house call and take care of your back. Stephen Fletcher and Isaiah McNair have 37 of the Colonels' 49 points. The dynamic duo right now finds their team down by four. Who's Batman? Uh, I would say... And any given night, anybody's Batman. No, he took the oh, I'm taking the fence. Weasel, I'm, weasel I'm out. I'm taking the high road there. I can't. They put me on the spot with that one. 
Adam West is Batman. The oh, okay. I mean, I thought you meant who's Batman, who's Robin. No, I, I meant McNair. I meant McNair. Oh. And, uh, but, but Mike DeMauro gave me a joke. and Stolen by Ledger, and Fletcher will have the basketball. Swings it over to McNair. Long three. No good, and a strong rebound by Volkert. Nice look that time. McNair had a chance to knock it down. He just couldn't quite get it to fall. Volkerts pressured, swings it. Benson, long three for Fitch. No good short. Rebound by Ruling, and the follow's good. Ryan Ruling with the putback. And a six-point Falcons lead with a minute and eight remaining. Offensive rebound and second-chance points, the story of the game here for the uh, Fitch Falcons. And a turnover by Ledger. They get it back. And a timeout called by Dave Cornish as the Falcons, with exactly one minute on the clock, have a six-point lead. And six-point lead has been the M.O. for the Falcons in the second half. They pretty much maintained that. Fitch uh, has, you know, saw that lead drop to four, drop to two, but Ledger just couldn't get over the hump here in the second half. So a six-point lead is a two-possession game, which is still very doable. So Ledger with the basketball, it's only a two-possession game. They don't need to shoot threes, but they do have to get a basket here and then get into pressure. What kind of pressure can we expect to see from Ledger after a made basket? Well, I mean, Ledger will run that 2-2-1 full court pressure to try and trap you on the sidelines and play center field on the weak side in the passing lane. That's what they like to do, and that's how they create offense off of defense. Now, if you're Fitch, if you're Fitch here, are you going to try to break that press and get points, or are you just looking to break the press to eat time at this point? Are I'm, you, I'm still going to be in attack mode, Casey. I think if you let up now, if you have a chance for a two-on-one or a three-on-one opportunity, you score the bucket and you go from there. Well, we'll see what Coach Dave Cornish draws up. One minute remaining. Fitch is going to have to make their free throws because one thing is for certain, they're already in the bonus. So you know Fitch is going to be shooting foul shots here down the stretch. Ruling. Cooper, Volkerts, Farris, and Benson for the Falcons. Whipple, McNair, Campbell. A long three from Fletcher, no good. Rebound up, and who comes out of the pack with it? Fletcher again, over to McNair. He tries to drive, and he's pressured now. Time is short. Runner by Campbell, excuse me, by McNair, no good. And we've got an offensive foul on McNair. Great step in that time by Greg Cooper. Cooper stepping up, protecting the rim, not letting McNair get to the cup. Hutchins is out there, pressuring for Ledger. Nice job that time. Farris gets it to Cooper. Benson to Volkerts. Volkerts, trapped, falls to the floor, loses it. Ledger comes out with it. McNair, nice pass to Whipple. Whipple to the basket. Basket is good. Scotty Whipple cuts the lead to four. Pressure by Ledger. Farris comes out with it, tries to dribble through it, can't do it. He's trapped, and we're going to get a timeout by Alec Furtick with 25 seconds remaining and a four-point Fitch lead. Right now, it's going to have to be a quick trap and then foul. If Ledger does not steal the ball in the initial trap, Casey, they're going to have to look to foul on the pass or in that trap. They don't have a lot of time to play around with. It's still a two-possession game, so it's a quick trap. If we're not going to turn you over, then we're going to have to put you at the line. And right now, Fitch still is in the one and one Now, on the other side of things, you know, in football, when you're expecting the onside kick, you know, you put your hands team in. Right. Right now, if you're a Fitch, are you, you're putting your, your frow shooting team in, right? Yeah, you're putting your shooters in. You're putting the guys that, you know, shoot 70% and above from the free throw line, not the foul line. Now, the other side of things, if you get a quick basket, uh, excuse me, if you get a quick turnover and a basket for Ledger, it still only cuts the deficit to a two-point game. So you're going to have to foul right away, or are you still going to press and see what they do with it? Again, depending if they turn Fitch over here and get a quick bucket, let's say with you know 16 seconds to go, it's the initial trap. If we're not going to turn you over, then we got to foul you. we got to put you at the line. Again, two, on one more foul, and Fitch is still in a one-and-one. One. Two more fouls, Fitch is in a double bonus. Well, the crowd's having fun tonight. They're dancing. They're shaking it. They're having a good time. So are we. The game day crew loves ourselves a good high school basketball game. Hi to you too, ma'am. 24 seconds remaining in the game, 55-51. The Falcons at home have a surprising lead late in the game. They, they seem to have been hovering around this point for a long time. Yeah, Ledger just couldn't get over the hump here in the second half. Volkerts will inbound. He's being guarded by Fletcher. Screens run, and he gets it to Benson. Benson pressured. Benson drives to the basket. And we're going to get a foul on the floor. A foul by Makai Huli-Sebastian. And it's going to put J. 
Jalen Benson at the foul line for a one and one. A big foul shot here for Benson. Big foul shot now, Jalen Benson, the sophomore guard. He dips, he shoots, and it's good. Big basket that time. Jalen Benson knocks down the first one, makes it a five point lead for the Falcons. He'll get another. Second one's up, and it's good. Big job by Benson, knocking them both down. Now Fitch pressures, trying to get a little bit of chaos. Broken by McNair, great look the other way, no good, Volkerts comes out with it. We're under 14 seconds, Volkerts gets it to Ruling. Ruling are gonna have to foul, and they do, they foul Ryan Ruling with 10 seconds remaining. Ruling will go to the line to shoot two, as that will put them in the double bonus. Six point lead and two foul shots, under 10 seconds. I like Fitch's chances. Yeah, Fitch has played a very good ball game tonight. They handled the pressure uh, thrown at them by the Ledger Colonels. They survived 10 turnovers in the first half, Casey, and they made the plays down the stretch. And the offensive rebounding gave them second and third chance opportunities in this first and second half. Ruling misses the first one, but the fans think this one's over as they are starting to head for the exits with just under 10 seconds remaining, a six point lead. This would be the big foul shot. Ruling really needs to make this, make it a three point possession game. Ruling dips, shoots, misses the second one too and Whipple goes high for the rebound, it's not over yet. Long pass to the basket goes, well I can't tell you who it was. It looks Makai like Sebastian. Seba Makai Sebastian. I say that because there's a mass exodus of Wildebeest, I should be looking at the screen. We're gonna go up top instead. Volkerts now and that's gonna do it. They're going to, Legend's going to let him run around. Final score here at Fitch High School. The home Falcons, 57. The visiting Colonels, 51 in what we can only call a major upset here in Groton. Your leading scorers tonight, not who we thought. Eddie Volkerts was not one of the leading scorers for the Fitch Falcons. And the sports doctor going down on the floor. He's going to get winning coach Alec Furtick. But before we do any of that, we will take a quick break and we'll come back shortly. You're watching Game Day on the Day.com. My name is Deanna Shepard Smith. I have two kids at Nathan Hale Elementary School in New London. They come from out of town, so they get up really early, get the bus, they come to school. The way that they teach the students here, it's concentrated on how the child learns. So each child is treated individually on how they learn and how they excel. I would say absolutely hands down, do what you can to get in. Without a doubt, I can't even begin to express how big the impact is. We're back here at Fitch High School. The Falcons with a 57-51 lead. A big win, we've got the sports doctor. He's down on the court with some of the excited Falcons head coach, Alec Furtick, and a couple of players. Sports doctor. If you can, we can find you amongst the sea of humanity, what you got? Head coach here, Alec Furtick. Coach, big win tonight for you and your kids here tonight. Yes, you know, we grinded it out. You know, we held on to a lead, and it's been a culmination. Last couple days of practice have been the best practices we had all year, and it paid off tonight. How proud are you of you your kids coming off of a loss at Old Lyme and rebounding against a very good Ledger team? You know, this is the first time all year we played a full 32 minutes. You know, we should have been doing it from the beginning. You know, but I'm glad our guys, you know, we have great senior leadership and everything clicked today. Yeah, now what does this mean for your team moving forward in the league play? Well, we're happy just to get our first large victory. You know, and then we got Woodstock on Monday and a very much improved St. Bernard's on Friday. You know, so we don't have time for a letdown. It's going to be back to the drawing board tomorrow. Yeah, and surprise, surprise, you didn't need 40 points from Eddie Volkic tonight to do it. He had a little help from his friends. Justice was served tonight here. Justice Ferris, big game for you tonight in a supporting role. Thank you. Um, coach, coach called on you to make some shots, and you had some open looks, and you knocked them down. Yeah, he told me when I came into the gym, Coach Bunkley, JV coach, told me that to help this team win, I'm gonna need to be a scorer, and I just played my role. Eddie, you seem to do it all out there in the court. You rebound, you defend. You gave them a lot of trouble in the defense, in the zone, protecting the rim. How important is it for you and your team to get contributions for other people on the offensive end? It's very important because when I'm tired, I mean, people got to step up. When I'm having a bad game, people got to step up. It's really important. And, and listen, last thing, do you ever get tired out there? Sometimes, but I'm used to it. 
All right, listen, Casey, the Fitch Falcons overcoming tonight. A happy group of kids. Big time game tonight. Fitch is alive and back in the ECC, my friend. Thank you, Sports Doctor. We knew Eddie Volkerts was going to come to play. Now, they say Justice is blind, but Justice is also humble. Justice Farris with a very nice job tonight and very humble, crediting, of course, his program. Now, the next game that you're going to be seeing here live on game day, we're going to be switching things up. You're going to be watching girls basketball action as we bring Mercy at NFA on Saturday, January 23rd. Then, of course, we'll be back at Waterford High School for the NFA Wildcats, their first look here on game day with the Waterford High School Lancers. And then the football rivalry on the basketball court, the Bacon Academy Bobcats and the Ledger High School Colonels, the New London Whalers and the Ledger Colonels, and, of course, the semifinals and finals of the boys and the finals of the ECC girls. So had a great time here tonight. Uh, you're... Looking at the remnants of the Fitch crowd, your final score again, 57-51. A very exciting and big win for the Fitch High School Falcons. The Ledger Colonels will go back to work, as they always do. Head coach Dave Cornish will have his next game planned out. We'll see what they work on. For the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien. For Mike DeMauro, Peter Wappy, Tim Cook, Carlos Vieja, and Shelly Yang. All the game day crew, junior voice of game day, take us home. Two. 57. 57. 57. And Ledgered. 51. 51. Live on the day.com. <laughs>